All right, Giant fans, it's finally here. My seven round New York Giants only mock draft in its entirety. Mock away, everybody. That's coming your way next on the Locked On Giants podcast. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to a new edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Traina. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day, or if you are watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. We appreciate you. And on today's episode, I'm going to do it. That's right. I've been talking about it. I finally did it. I'm going to unveil my seven rounds. New York Giants only mock draft. So I'm going to do round one in this segment, round two and three in the next segment. And then we're going to finish up with four through seven. So I'm really excited to bring out this particular mock draft to you. And uh, before I jump into that, um, just want to send a shout out because today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash lock on today to get started. All right. So here's how I approach this particular mock draft. I went to Pro Football Focus and I used their simulator. And I set all the sliders, you know, before you just start the draft, I set them all to about the midway point because I didn't want to tilt them one way or the other. In the end, I made the picks. I didn't go with any recommendations. I kind of just made the picks based on my value board, not on pro football focuses, grades or anything like that. I just used their their material as a reference. So I uh, used that, that simulator, printed out the results, and I have the full draft here. So I can kind of tell you, in, at least in the early rounds, <clears throat> excuse me, who's, who was on the board, who wasn't on the board at the time of the pick. So I'll do that for maybe the first few rounds, um, because once you get into day three, it's, you know, there weren't a whole lot of names that that if I said, oh, this guy was on the board or this guy wasn't on the board, you know, it, it, it's also, it's almost a, a toss up. So my whole goal here was to go for best player available while marrying need. Now, that meant that, uh, you know, I look at the Giants' free agency moves or lack thereof at certain positions, and that didn't necessarily sway me one way or another when I made my picks. So that being said, let's mock away because we're going to get into round one of my seven-round Giants mock draft. Okay, so the Giants picking 25 overall. And by the way, there were opportunities to make trades. I did not make any trades in this draft. If I do another one of these mock drafts a little closer to the draft, the actual draft, I might engage in trades, but I did not for this one. So I just want to mention that real quick. All right, round one, slot number 25. Already off the board at this point, um, several receivers were gone. Jackson Smith, Najigba was off the board. Uh, Let's see. um, Other receivers that were off the board. Uh, Jordan Addison was off the board. That's a guy I would have considered here. Um, Cornerbacks. There was a run on cornerbacks early in this simulated mock draft. Matter of fact, from picks 12 through 17, there was like a whole slew of cornerbacks that came off the board. So, you know, guys like... um, uh, Witherspoon, Devin, Devin Witherspoon from um, Illinois, gone. Deontay Banks from Maryland, gone. Joey Porter Jr. from Penn State, gone. Christian Gonzalez from Oregon, gone. So what did I do at 25? I went with Boston College receiver Zay Flowers. All right. Now, why another receiver? considering the Giants have a gazillion receivers on their roster. Why not, you know, go in a different direction? Because some of the other names that were on the board, by the way, 
uh, included Guard Osiris Torrance from Florida. Um, let me see who else was on the board. Miles Murphy, edge rusher. Will McDonough, the fifth, an edge rusher. And Dewan Jones. And of course, all the centers are still on the board at this point. So why did I go with Zay Flowers? Let's look at the Giants receivers as it currently stands. So the Giants brought back Sterling Shepard on a one-year deal. They signed Darius Slayton to a two-year deal. They signed Jamison Crowder to a one-year deal. Paris Campbell, one-year deal. Jeff Smith, one-year deal. You see where I'm going with this, folks? No? They got a lot of guys here only on one-year deals. So it's almost like a toss-up. And one of the things that I kind of detected with the Giants and how they've approached building the roster is they're bringing in a bunch of guys on one-year deals. And this is the second year in a row they're doing this, despite having a better cap situation. So they're bringing in all these guys on one-year deals while they're trying to build up through the draft. So these guys are, are kind of like stopgap solutions but if one of them happens to work out, then, hey, sign them to a second contract. So that seems to be the approach that Joe Shane is taking with, with building the roster. Not a bad approach if you think about it. It's similar to what Buffalo did in the beginning. So to me, you know, you have Wandale Robinson, who's under contract for more than one year, although he's coming back from that season ending um, ACL injury. Isaiah Hodgins was brought back for one year. You've got Colin Johnson on the roster, I think, for who, who signed through this year. You've got to start building that receiver core for the future. So I know in the past I've said, oh, you know, my, my first pick in the, when I do the mock draft is either going to be a cornerback or a center. Because of the run on cornerbacks, I decided to wait. Zay Flowers, to me, was the last viable option as far as receiver worthy of a first-round pick. Hence. He is my pick for the Giants at 25 overall in the first round. Now, what did I do for rounds two and three, which would be day two of the draft? Stick around and I'll tell you. Hey, Giant fans, the tournament is heating up and there's no better place right now to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now FanDuel is giving new customers a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if their first bet does not win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to the point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Again, that site to check out, fanduel.com slash locked on to get information on your no sweat first bet. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. You got Patricia Turner here, your host. And mock away, folks, because I'm doing my seven round New York Giants only mock draft. And I just unveiled my first pick for the Giants. Wide receiver Zay Flowers of Boston College, for which, by the way, Pro Football Focus, whose simulator is the one I use for this mock draft, Pro Football Focus gave, gave me a grade of an A on that pick. So, so far, seems like I'm off to a good start. Now, what did I do in rounds two and three? Let's get into it. All right. Round two. All right, so who was off the board in round two? Well, John Michael Schmitz, gone. I know. I, I've been talking about him um, as a guy that I like for the Giants in the second round. He wasn't there. Also, some of the names off the board in round two. Jack Campbell, the linebacker out of Iowa. Keely Ringo, the cornerback out of Georgia. He was off the board. Steve Avila the guard slash center from TCU off the board. So some of the guys that I had grades for second round gone, who was on the board for me. Well, I can mention some of the names that were on the board here. Trenton Simpson was on the board. Uh, Julius Brent on the board, cornerback out of uh, Kansas state and Simpson, of course, the linebacker out of um, Clemson. 
uh, Cedric Tillman, another wide receiver out of Tennessee, and Hendon Hooker, a quarterback, too early for me to take a quarterback. The guy that I went with at pick number 57, Ohio State center, Luke Whipler. All right, center, baby. I need a center in this draft, preferably by the second round. I think I, we could all agree that the Giants need a center. Um, even though they have downplayed it this week at the owners' meetings, the Giants need a center for the long term. So to me, Whipler was the only one left. That was the guy I went with. Um, I, it, Schmitz was gone. Um, I don't recall if Tittman was, was there. I, I think Tittman was off the board as well. Just real quick looking here. Yeah, Tittman, Tittman um, no, Tittman was still on the board. But Whitman, uh, Whipler, to me, just the more I've, I've done work on him and just read up on him, that, that was the guy I decided to go with. So we've got center and the grade I got from the pro football focus simulator for that selection an a, so I didn't reach uh, good value there, you know, and the giants got their center. If they listen to me, <laughs> this scenario plays out. All right. Round three. What did I do in round three? All right. Again, some of the names at this point who were off the board, Trenton Simpson, who went and picked number 66. Uh, let's see. Hendon Hooker, again, quarterbacks too early, to, in my opinion, to go. Um, matter of fact, a couple of quarterbacks, interestingly, went in, in the third round here. Uh, let's see. Was there anybody else of note? Um yeah, those, you know, Willie Simpson was the only one of note. And I probably should have gone with Simpson at this point. I thought about it, but there was another guy that caught my eye and I ended up going with him. And I got a B on this grade. Maybe, you know, maybe I would have gotten an A if I'd gone with Simpson, but the player that I selected, I got a B from the simulator. And that player at number 89 overall, South Carolina cornerback. Darius Rush. Now, I keep saying this, folks. The Giants have an opening at cornerback. And even, you know, during the owners meeting, the league meetings this week, Brian Dable, Joe Shane said that there's basically going to be a competition for the starting job opposite of Odori Jackson. The cornerback class is so deep. You could probably go into the fourth round and still get good value if you wanted to. But me, I'm looking for a starter, a potential starter here. All right, Darius Rush, six foot two, 198 pounds, 4.36 speed. All right, size, length, physical. He has a lot of experience playing on the outside, not so much experience playing in the slot. According to Pro Football Focus, only 26 career snaps in the slot. Uh, 24 at free safety and 57 down on the box, down in the box. So primarily an outside cornerback. And that's what the Giants need because, you know, they, they might have, a, you know, they're going to have this competition between Aaron Robinson and Nick McLeod and, and Cordell Flott. You know, those guys aren't bad, but I just, I don't know. To me, I see them more as a, as a depth type of player, you know, like a, a sub package. And, um, you know, Robinson, as we know, hasn't been able to stay healthy. So I'm not sold on him. I think the Giants definitely need to come out of this draft with a cornerback. Rush is my pick. I like the size. I like the speed, the production. Um, we can talk about the production real quick. Uh, in coverage, he had a 91.7 coverage rating, 15 pass breakups, um, only three interceptions over his career. And let me see, he allowed 46.6% of the pass targets against him to be completed. So to me, not bad um, for that spot, for that value, cornerback. So my, again, to recap my day two picks in round two, center Luke Weepler. Uh, and in round three, Darius Rush. So, so far, my grades for this mock draft, A, for the receiver, Zay Flowers, A for the center, 
and B for the cornerback. Now we're going to get into the tough part where you can really overthink things. That's rounds four through seven. What did I do in those rounds? Stick around. I'll tell you right after this. Hey, Giant fans, thanks so much for making the Locked on Giants podcast your first listener watch every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes. From free agency to the draft, salary cap management, and more, join NFL experts Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino as they take you through what it's like to build a successful NFL franchise on their podcast, available every Monday through Friday. Find the Locked on NFL Scouting podcast with the Draft Dudes wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm Patricia Trainer, your host, and I'm doing a mock draft. Yep, I promised you it's here. I'm sure by now some of you are already getting ready to mock away, which is fine. Look, everybody's got an opinion. When it comes to these things, I'm not saying that I'm going to be right on everything. I'm not saying I'm going to be wrong on everything. But, you know, these are fun to do. And that's why we do it. And by the way, speaking of mock drafts, on Giants Country, we're going to roll out, we being the editorial team over there, we're going to start rolling out our writer mock drafts, of which I am going to contribute one to. So that mock draft, I'm going to probably do it a different way with a different simulator. No guarantee it's going to look the same as the one that I'm presenting to, to you here on the Lockdown Giants podcast, but something to keep an eye on. It's something that we're going to hopefully start rolling out next week with uh, each individual writer contributing a mock draft. And uh, I'm not sure which simulator I'm going to use. I know I won't use Pro Football Focus since I used it here, but I'll take another crack at it. Why not? I mean, what do we got to lose at this point, right? So... Also, while I'm talking about stuff that's coming up, um, it is my hope that starting next week that I get some of the Locked On College hosts to come on, talk about some of their school's prospects. We've done that in the past and, um, you know, they've given us the 411 on some of these players who they cover on a regular basis. So we're going to look to see if we can get some of those folks on the program throughout the next few weeks leading up to the draft. So exciting times here on the NFL calendar because it's draft season. It is in full blast. Draft season is coming to a close next month. And it'll be like, you know, the morning of your birthday when you open up various presents and see what you got. So uh, incidentally, the draft coming up not too long after my birthday. So uh, so it's going to be fun to cover all the new players that are coming in. And I hope you will keep it here on the Lockdown Giants podcast as we continue to bring you shows five days a week, Monday through Friday on YouTube and wherever you get your audio platforms. Okay, enough of the chit chat. We got some more business to finish up. Now, in this day three scenario, the Giants have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven picks to make. Seven picks. That's a lot. I do not think, by the way, they're going to keep all seven. I could see them maybe moving one of their seventh rounders. But again, because I did not do trades in this particular draft, I'm going to keep them all and I'm going to make a pick when on the clock. So. How did I do in this part? Well, we'll talk, we're going to find out. Let's get into it. All right, some of the names. Let's see if there was anybody notable on the uh, board when I made my pick. No, not really. Not really. Um, this one to me was kind of an easy one, I think. And uh, I'll tell you a name that was off the board that I would have liked to have considered here. And hopefully I pronounced this correctly, but Alabama linebacker Henry Toto was off the board. That would have probably been my pick had he been there. So what I did instead at pick number 128, I went with San Jose State edge rusher Valami Fajoko. Why edge rusher? Why Fajoko? Well, let me answer the, the first question. The Giants have a sneaky need at edge rusher. 
I mentioned they had Kayvon Thibodeau. They have Aziz Ojolari. Those are their starters. If one of those guys gets hurt, the depth right now, they have Jihad Ward, who's back on a one-year deal, and Ellerson Smith, who we really don't know a whole lot about because the guy hasn't been able to stay healthy. So to me, edge rusher is a sneaky need for this team. Got to get some depth there. So I decided to go with Fahoko because um, I thought, A, the value was there. But in having, you know, done some work on him, you know, a guy who can play the run, rush the passer, not really much of a coverage guy, but, you know, you want your edge guys to be able to, to be able to set the edge and also be able to get to the passer. And he checks those boxes. Now, that, of course, being my pick, what did Pro Football Focus think in its simulation? Gave me a grade of C on that pick. All right. Well, you're not going to get A's across the board, I suppose, but um, I didn't think it was that bad of a pick. I mean, now maybe y'all will disagree, but anyway. So uh, Fajoko, San Jose State, edge rusher in round four, my pick. Round five, who are we looking at here? Let's see, off the board. A guy who I probably would have considered if he had been there at number 160, Emil Echior Jr., the offensive lineman, interior offensive lineman from Alabama. He was taken at pick number 156 in the simulation. So who was on the board at the time? Let's see. We had cornerback Riley Moss out of Iowa. We had, uh, let's see, who else? Davis Allen. Clemson tight end, uh, Ronnie Hickman, a safety from Ohio State. But remember, the Giants have two picks in the fifth round. So they've got pick number 160 and pick number 172. So for me, at pick 160, I went with San Diego State interior defensive lineman, Jonah Tavai. And, you know, the Giants, you know, they've added defensive linemen. I get that, you know, they added Rakeem. Nunez Roches, a.k.a. Nacho. Um, they obviously are going to look to get something done long-term with uh, Dexter Lawrence. Leonard Williams isn't going anywhere. They have, you know, Ryder Anderson. But to me, you know, also, also let's not forget uh, DJ Davidson, who's coming back off of the ACL injury. I don't know if he's going to be ready to start. But to me, I just think the Giants need a little bit more depth on that interior defensive line. We saw all too often last year when Dexter and Leo came off the field there was a drop in the production and the talent. So let's beef that up because there's something to be said for having a deep rotation on the defensive line. And I just thought that was a good spot, you know, with the value aligning and who was left on the board to go interior defensive line with that particular pick. All right. Now, as I mentioned, the Giants have a second pick in the fifth round, pick number 172. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is where I went running back. All right. So my choice for the Giants at pick number 172 is halfback Eric Gray out of Oklahoma. Now, here's the thing to consider. Yes, the Giants are going to have Saquon Barkley back this year. And it looks like it's going to be on the franchise tag. Um, right now, as I record this, I am not optimistic Barkley is going to sign a long-term deal. Could change as we get a little closer to the deadline, the July 17 deadline, but I just don't have a warm and fuzzy feeling about it. So that being said, let's kind of look ahead. And I, I don't want to go too far ahead, but I think we have to in this case. So after this year, let's assume, I know it's dangerous, but let's assume that the Giants have Barkley play out on the tag. Then come next year, tag candidates, potential ca tag candidates, again, include Barkley and safety Xavier McKinney, who, if assuming he's not resigned or extended before then, could potentially get the franchise tag. If I'm the Giants and I have to make a choice between those two, 
I'm going McKinney, assuming, of course, McKinney, who is rehabbing that hand this offseason, assuming that that hand is, you know, he was able to put that behind him and, you know, stay on the field. Because with McKinney, you know, he's now missed chunks of time in two of his four, uh, two of his three seasons so far in the league. Again, injury is not his fault, but it's something we've got to take into consideration. With Barkley, you know, I'd like to see him with the Giants on a long-term deal. I just don't have a warm and fuzzy feeling that that's going to happen um, this year. And if it doesn't happen this year, given that this running back class in the draft is so deep, it would behoove the Giants, who, by the way, they do have Matt Breida back on a one-year deal. They have Ja'Shawn Corbin, who was on their practice squad most of last year. And they have Gary Brightwell under contract. I think it would behoove them to start looking ahead to the future. Running backs have just such a short life as, as a rule in the NFL. And I don't think it would hurt to dip into this class and add a running back. So, you know, um, in that instance, um, Gray was sitting there. I thought it wasn't too late in the draft to take a running back. The value was there. That's my pick. And I got a grade of B minus for that pick. So my two fifth round uh, picks, Jonah Tavai, B minus, Eric Gray, B minus. So, so far, not too bad on day number three of the draft. All right. Round six. Let's take a look. Round six, the Giants with one pick. So let's see who is on the board and who is off the board. If there's anybody no, notable on, on and off the board. Again, when we get to round six, round seven, the names to me start to kind of run together. You start to see clusters, guys that could easily go from being, you know, a six round projection to an undrafted free agent. So it's really just a matter of, I think, you know, preference and, how, you know, what do they say? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. In round six, I went linebacker here. Um, I chose Pittsburgh linebacker Servosia Dennis with pick number 209, a guy who is an off-ball linebacker, can cover, he's a thumper, um, has a little bit of pass rush ability to him. Look, I know the Giants have Bobby Okereke. They're going to hopefully have a healthy Darian Beavers back. Those two would be my, my projected starters in the base package. Um, I just wonder maybe Dennis can maybe play that nickel linebacker, you know, assuming he comes along uh, in his development. Um, Okereke, I think, is going to be an every down backer for the Giants. I don't think they're going to take him off the field, given that he could do everything they need him to do. So I just feel like they need some depth at that linebacker position because outside of Okereke, and Beavers, you know, you have uh, Micah McFadden, who was a pick last year, who, you know, really wasn't ready for, for a starting role, um, despite the fact he got thrust into one last year. He had some struggles. You still have Carter Coughlin, who, you know, I, I'm not sure what his future is beyond maybe special teams. Cam Brown, who's a special teamer. So, yeah, I, I think you've got to add to that linebacker group because that linebacker group has been a sore spot for this team. And, you know, a Karake will certainly beef, beef up that, that depth a lot, but um, I'd like to see maybe, maybe another young player in there. Hence why I went with, with uh, Servosia Dennis. So, all right, that's round six. And what, what grade did I get for that? Round six, they gave me a grade of a C plus for that grade. All right, you're not going to get A's all the time. I get it. It's okay. So, um, so far, again, still doing okay. All right, round seven. The last round, there's three picks in this round. And let's see, the Giants have picks number 240, 243, and 254. All right, let's see what I did in round seven. I'm going to give you pick number 240 and 243. 
And to me, you know, I could have easily reversed these two. I guess it wouldn't have mattered. But for some reason, I just went in this particular order. 240, I picked TCU quarterback Max Dugan. And at 243, I picked Oregon tackle TJ Bass. Now, let me start with Dugan and why I picked him. I have said that I believe the Giants will take a developmental quarterback in this draft. They've got 10 picks. They can afford to take one. Now, consider this. Tyrod Taylor is only under contract one more year. Davis Webb has retired. Time to develop a quarterback. And that's something I believe um, the Bills used to do or still do to this day. You know, Joe Shane, Brian Dable coming from the Bills. I could see the Giants spending a draft pick in the seventh round, one of those three seventh round picks on a quarterback. Now, is it possible that Dugan could have been an undrafted free agent? Sure. I mean, I didn't really go through the list and say, you know, these are the undrafted free agents I'd sign. That's, that's another exercise for another day. But Dugan was there. I said, you know what? 10 picks. They need a developmental quarterback. That's the direction I'm going in. And again, I could have easily made, dropped him down to 243 and gone with the offensive tack first. But that's the order I did it in. All right. Now, speaking of the offensive tackle, TJ Bass of Oregon, here's my thinking here. The Giants have um, their starters in Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal. They have Tyree Phillips back. Matt Parrott is still on the roster, although I don't know if he has a future with this team. I think he's going to have to compete to keep his roster spot. Um, they also have a few other guys that are versatile enough. And I think Jack Anderson can play uh, some tackle in a pinch. Um, I'm not wild about the depth, to be honest with you. So get an, another young guy on board, develop him, see what you got there. You know, because after a while, like I said, if, if Matt Parrott doesn't make the roster, now you're starting over with a younger guy and you're starting from scratch, a guy that, you know, your offensive line coach is going to be working with from day one. So just, you know, I, I thought, and, and the other thing I liked about uh, Bass is that he could also play inside at guard. So you have that flexibility, tackle guard, which, you know, the Giants have a lot of guard center candidates right now on the roster, not a whole lot of guard tackle. So that was an appeal to me. All right, so that grade uh, for Max Dugan, I got a grade of C. For Bass, I got a grade of C+. Plus. My final pick in the draft, third pick in the seventh round, pick number 254, is safety Tyreek Jones out of Boise State. So Tyreek Jones out of Boise State, for whom I got a grade of a C+. Plus. Why is safety at that point? Despite the fact that, you know, the Giants have McKinney, they have Jason Pinnock, who's very, you know, promising. Um, they have Trenton Thompson, who is, is on the, was on the practice squad. Um, you know, they have Terrell Burgess, who can compete for that. I want more competition. Bobby McCain, they added him uh, on a one-year deal. Give me more competition. I just, you know, I, I don't want to say that this pattern has developed quite yet with the Giants because... I need to see another round of draft before I can say this for sure. But usually at positions where Joe Shane has signed guys to like one-year deals, usually that's an area where they further fortify in the draft. Not always, but usually. So I just think that safety is a position that they might look to fortify. So, you know, I've addressed what I think are needs and for that grade, I got a C plus. So two C pluses and a C for my round seven picks. Not too bad. I mean, no Fs, thank gosh. Um, so overall, how did I do with my 10 picks? I got a B plus. So to recap my picks for the New York Giants in this mock draft, Zay Flowers, wide receiver out of Boston College, got an A. Center Luke Whipler out of Ohio State, got an A. Cornerback Darius Rush out of South Carolina, got a B. Edge rusher Valami Fajoko out of San Jose State, got a C. 
Defensive interior lineman, Jonah Tavai out of San Diego State. That's a B minus. Halfback, Eric Gray out of Oklahoma, B minus. Linebacker, Servosia Dennis out of Pittsburgh, C plus. Quarterback, Max Dugan out of TCU, C. Oregon offensive tackle, TJ Bass, C plus. And safety, Tyreek Jones out of Boise State, C plus for a grand total grade, B plus. So tell me how I did. If you're watching on YouTube, drop a comment in the box below. If you're listening on our audio platforms and you want to send me a letter saying that I don't know what the heck I'm talking about or what an awesome draft, I'm going to sign up for that in a heartbeat. The information on how to get in touch is in the show notes. And of course, you can always tweet me. Make sure you put the uh, hashtag ask P train in there so that I see it. But if you want to send me a, a tweet, my Twitter handle is at Patricia underscore Traina, T-R-A-I-N-A. Or if your Instagram is your thing and you want to call me out on this, I'm going to have a little teaser on, on my Instagram account and you can post over there. My Instagram handle is at Patty Traina, P-A-T-T-I-T-R-A-I-N-A. That's going to do it for us here on the Lockdown Giants podcast. Mock away, Giant fans. I can take it. I'm a big girl. Until tomorrow, when we're back with an all new episode, everybody have a great one. Thanks so much for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day or watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. We'll see you tomorrow, Giant fans.